So I know studying for the TSI test um, is very important to you guys. So I don't want you wasting time when studying. So there are things that have updated recently and I just want to fill you guys in and I want to give you my tips in studying for the TSI to make it the most effective, especially if you're on a time constraint. Say you have to take this test in the next couple of weeks. I want you to know what it is that you need to study. So in this video, let's just break it down. I'm going to show you guys um, where to find the official practice test. Then I'm gonna show you the differences between the old practice test and the new practice test. And the reason why I wanna show you the differences is so that you can make sure that you're studying from the most recent version of the test. I wanna show you what problems are no longer on the test and what problems have been added. Then I'll give you some suggestions on how to properly study for this test and pass it. So if you guys have any questions, you can just let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them in my next video. Okay, so first question is um, what, uh, how to find the official practice test. So if you type in Google um, official um, TSI practice test, you'll see a link to a college board exam. And on the college board exam, this is printed out, but on the college board exam, you're gonna come up with the actual official practice test, not to the person who created a website that says officialpracticetest.com. This is going to be from the AccuPlacer website. So again, type in TSI official practice test. And then when you see a website for AccuPlacer, it's an, um, the official website I think is accuplacer.org. When you see that come up, click on it, and then you should be able to find a link to the official practice test. This is the new updated one. Literally, it may have been updated within the last two months. I just realized that it updated and it kind of like surprised me a little bit too. So that's why I'm letting you guys know that this is going to be what you guys study from. I would recommend not studying from anything else until you've mastered this practice test. This practice test contains, let me see. This practice test contains 20 different questions Master those 20 questions before you go about practicing all these other skills and all these other problems. Take this official practice test, make it your study guide, and make sure that you understand how to solve each problem. And until you fully understand how to understand this problem or how to solve these problems, don't move away from it and start um, looking on different websites and looking for different places to, to study from. Just focus on the practice test. Now, I have the old practice test pulled up or downloaded onto my iPad, and that's what I'm gonna share with you guys now. So just, if you bear with me, because I'm terrible at editing, I am just gonna share my screen and it's gonna pop up. Okay. There we go. So this was the old practice test. And I'm gonna show you which problems are no longer included. And then I'm gonna show you the new practice test questions and show you which ones are the new questions. So if there are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram, how many pounds are there in X kilograms? We are no longer doing this problem. And I'm happy about it because it really just was all about confusing you guys. So if you're looking at a practice test that has this question on it, this is no longer part of the official practice test. All right, the second one, this one is still on it. So you still need to learn how to do bar graphs, okay? Three, this one is still on it. This one is asking you to put together different um, binomials or to put together different um, expressions and then multiply them. Again, this is something that will be on your test still. Question number four, solving for P or solving for a variable, this is still on the test. Five, this one is running at an average rate. How many will you run in this amount of miles? This is a proportion question. This particular proportion question is no longer gonna be on the test. However, you should know that there are going to be proportion questions on the official practice test still, but it's not going to be this example that you're gonna learn from. So this is no longer included. Okay, I hope I'm not going too fast, but you clearly will be able to see what's included and what's not. Just so you can get an overview, you can go ahead and download the new practice test and clearly see. This is just for people who may be studying from the old one, 
have, don't have access to it yet and just want to know what do you mean there's going to be questions that we don't have to use anymore. Okay, so number six, dot plots are still included, yes. Seven, unfortunately, being able to write the equation and replacing different variables, this cylinder question is still on it, yes. Number eight, this is no longer included. And I'm really happy about that because this is solving systems of equations where you write two statements, one for Richard, one for Jordan, then you have to solve. This one is no longer included. So you can go ahead and mark this one off your test. Okay, number nine, this is no longer included. You're solving for C and then figuring out what 24C is, not included anymore. You can mark this off your test. Okay, number 10, included figuring out slopes, 11, this is finding probability included. This one, which one, of, which of the following is not equivalent? This actually is included on it. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to mark it as not included. This is on the new test. It is, so yes, it's going to be on the new test. And then number 13, this one is not included, how to find how much the area of a carpet will be. So you can cross this off of your study guide. Number 14 is still on it. Number 15 is still on it. You need to learn the rules of exponents. 16, still on it. You need to be able to find the probability, but the opposite probability. 17, you need to find the y-intercept of an equation, still on it. 18, still on it. You need to figure out what the x is equal to in the area. And we're almost done, and we'll be able to move on to the new test. Um, 19, still on it, I believe. Let me just double check. Yep, it's still on it, so you still have to figure out what the value for x can or can't be. And number 20, population questions are still on it. So again, I just wanted to go over that with you just in case this is the one that you've been practicing from, because I think that it can be very overwhelming for you to have downloaded a practice test, been going over each one of the questions, and then all of a sudden they just wham out a new practice test and you go, well, what is it that I've already studied is going to be on it? That's why I wanted to show you the old practice test, because I think there's only about four or five questions that they no longer are going to include. So all the rest of your studying is still very important. Everything else that you've been studying still matters, still counts. The side thing that I want to mention, and I'm sorry if I'm rambling because I'm just trying to get as much information out there as possible, is just because these questions are not included in the official practice test does not mean you won't see these on the TSI test. Again, just because these five, four or five questions are no longer on the official practice test doesn't mean you won't see them. I don't have a reference for you to know whether or not we'll see them or not. Until I start tutoring more and more students using this new practice test and they go in and take their test, then I'll be able to get feedback and I'll ask them, did you see some of the questions that they took off before? If they say no, then I can then inform you guys and update you. So although these questions, four or five questions, will no longer be on the official practice test that I'm about to show you, that doesn't necessarily mean that you no longer have to study them. We have to figure out a balance between the two until we're able to ask other students about their test and whether or not they saw the same questions or it was only the new practice test. So keep the comments coming for everyone who's taken the TSI and passing well done, you guys, but you guys are really crucial in helping the next generation study because if you notice that there aren't any of those old questions when you go in and take your tests, comment below and let other people know, let me know, let other students know that they don't have to worry about them anymore. I just can't say whether they have to worry about them or not anymore. I'm just giving you the update and the facts. Okay, I think I've talked enough about what is no longer on the official practice test. So now let's move on to part two as what is updated about the new practice test. So let's go ahead and look at the new practice sample questions. Okay. So even though the thing about this is they didn't keep all the numbers the same. So even though they kept about 15 or 16 questions the same, they didn't number them the same way. So you may see the same questions appear, but they're numbered differently. 
So we just have to be very observant to see what questions are different now. So for example, number one, that's the same as last time. Two, same as last time. Number three, finding the percentages of a total. This is a new question. So number three is a new question. If you're downloading the new practice test and you've studied the old one, number three would be a number that you now have to practice. Number four is a brand new question. That is also a new one. Again, if you're just downloaded this new practice test and you've already been studying, practice number three and number four. Number five is also a new question. Study number five. Six, we've had, I think, um, let me just double check. I believe number six we've had already. Hmm. I think this is a new one, so I'm just gonna write new and I'll double check at the end. But I believe number six is new. Seven, we've seen already. Eight, already. Nine, already. Ten, the same. Eleven, we've seen already. Twelve, we've seen. Thirteen, we've seen. Fourteen, we've seen. Fifteen, we've seen. Sixteen is new. And unfortunately, it involves um, geometry or sometimes you would say trigonometry, depending on what it is. Sometimes you see trigonometry in geometry. So I would say this is a geometry slash trigonometry question. For number 16, that's brand new. Make sure you study it. 17, we've seen before. 18, we've seen before. 19, we've seen before. And 20, we've seen before. So there is a total of one, two, three, four, five. There's five new questions on the TSI test. Okay, so what does this mean for you? When you're studying, how do I recommend that you study? So again, if you're taking the TSI test, it's called an Accuplacer, but it's different from an Accuplacer. The TSI math test has a specific set of practice test questions that are different from the Accuplacer. The Accuplacer, they have a bunch of questions that you can practice and it will help, but the amount of questions for the TSI practice test is just 20. All other Accuplacer questions, there's three different exams that you can study from. So it's your choice, but you can either choose to study from the official TSI practice test if you're taking the TSI test, or you can study from all three of those tests and still never come across some of the questions that were on this official one. So what would I recommend? If you were taking the TSI test, study from the TSI official practice test. Don't study all the other Accuplacer math tests. Again, if you're taking the TSI test, study from the TSI practice test. Leave all of the rest alone. There's 20 questions on the official TSI practice test. If you can master answering the 20 questions and remember how to do it for another question that's very similar to it, then you will be able to get that question right. If you're able to get all 20 questions right, then you're done. You don't have to go any further. So what I recommend is learn this official practice test, the new one, backwards and forwards learn each problem and learn how to do each problem backwards and forwards and again and again and again. Okay, so now I will talk about some of the things that I've created and some of the things that I'm planning to create for you guys. This isn't an advertisement, but this is my, I'm trying to show you my method of study. So if you're looking at question number one on this practice test and you're able to answer it, and you're figuring out how to answer it, and you, you actually answered it easily. The next question you're gonna have in mind is, would I be able to do this again? Now, if you practice doing number one again, and again, and again, eventually you're gonna have the steps memorized, but you're also going to have the answer memorized. And you're not gonna feel 100% certain that you'd be able to do this again if the wording was slightly different. So what I've created is a practice test that mimics the majority of these questions, not every single one of them, because again, the test's just updated, so I'm a little bit behind, 
but I have created a 34 problem question test that allows you to do the same problem again and again and again. Now, again, the disclaimer is it won't have examples for these four new ones. I'm gonna have to work on those, but I do have a practice test that you can purchase that goes over all the other ones with check marks and you can practice the same problem with different wording again and again and again. What does that do for you? Not only does it give you confidence that you're able to answer the original question, but it also will instill some confidence in you that you'd be able to answer the same type of question again and again and again. It allows you to actually test your skills and